Good day and welcome to Big Bad Tech. I'm your instructor, Jim Pytel, and today we'll examine several illustrated examples of series AC circuit analysis. This lecture operates under the presumption the viewer has more than a passing familiarity with series AC circuit properties, including Kirchhoff's voltage law, and can wield the AC voltage divider rule without cutting themselves. If you lack the requisite level of familiarity with these topics, please review the supporting material at the Big Bad Tech channel and return to this lecture when you are so qualified. Mastery of series AC circuit analysis necessitates active participation on your part. And as such, I'm encouraging you to please pause the lecture when asked to do so and attempt the example problems on your own. If your answers do not match those illustrated, by all means, feel free to rewind the lecture and correct any mistakes you may have made. Our first illustrated example problem features a series combination of two elements. The first element is a 400 ohm resistor, and the second element is a 15 microfarad capacitor. The source has an effective value of 240 volts and an excitation frequency of 60 hertz. We're being asked to solve for the voltage drop across each element, the current through each element, and the source current. By all means, pause the lecture and try this on your own. If you're tracking, you should have obtained the following results. The complex impedance of the 400 ohm resistor is 400 ohms at an angle of zero degrees. Let's call this impedance Z1. The complex impedance of the 15 microfarad capacitor at an excitation frequency of 50 hertz is 212.2 ohms at an angle of negative 90 degrees. Let's call this impedance Z2. A Kirchhoff's voltage law analysis of this loop within this series circuit suggests that E equals V1 plus V2. Additionally, given there is a single path for current in this series relationship, it can be stated that source current, IS, equals current through element 1, which equals current through element 2. If we solve for current through any element, we by extension also solve for current through the remaining element, as well as source current. There are several ways to obtain our desired figures. Perhaps the easiest and most direct means of doing so is through the use of the AC voltage divider rule. The AC voltage divider rule set up to solve for V1 suggests that V1 equals 212 volts at an angle of 27.9 degrees. We could use another implementation of the AC voltage divider rule to solve for V2. However, let's make use of the easier Kirchhoff's voltage law. We know the source voltage and we just calculated the voltage drop across the first element. A rearrangement of the Kirchhoff's voltage law equation solving for unknown voltage V2 suggests that V2 equals E minus V1. Substituting our given values yields V2 to be 112.5 volts at an angle of negative 62.1 degrees. Application of Ohm's law to either impedance illustrates that the current through either element is 530 milliampers at an angle of 27.9 degrees. Source current for this purely series circuit is also 530 milliampers at an angle of 27.9 degrees. The phasor diagram for resistive impedance Z1 illustrates that current and voltage appear to be in phase with one another. The phasor diagram for capacitive impedance Z2 illustrates that current appears to lead voltage by a relative 90 degrees. Finally, the phasor diagram for the complete circuit illustrates that source current appears to lead source voltage by a relative 27.9 degrees. As a means of checking our work, one can solve for total impedance using implementation of Ohm's law. Supply voltage over source current gives a total impedance of 452.8 ohms at an angle of negative 27.9 degrees. Similarly, the summation of Z1 and Z2 also yields a total impedance of 452.8 ohms at an angle of negative 27.9 degrees. I've got a reasonable degree of confidence our answers are correct, and we can move on to the next illustrated example problem. Our second illustrated example problem features a series combination of three elements. First element is a 250 ohm resistor. The second element is a non-ideal 50 millihenry inductor that happens to include a small internal resistance of 40 ohms. And finally, the third element is an 8 microfarad capacitor. The source is an effective value of 95 volts and an excitation frequency of 400 hertz. We're again being asked to solve for the voltage drop across each element, the current through each element, and the source current. By all means, pause the lecture and try this on your own. If you're tracking, you should have obtained the following results. The complex impedance of the 250 ohm resistor is 250 ohms at an angle of 0 degrees. Let's call this impedance Z1. The complex impedance of the non-ideal inductor takes a little more computational effort. The complex impedance of the resistive portion of the non-ideal inductor is 40 ohms at an angle of 0 degrees. The complex impedance of the inductive portion of the non-ideal inductor at an excitation frequency of 400 hertz is 125.7 ohms at an angle of 90 degrees. The resistive and inductive portions of the non-ideal inductor are in series with one another. In totality, the non-ideal inductor presents a complex impedance of approximately 131.9 ohms at an angle of 72.3 degrees. Let's call this impedance Z2. Finally, the complex impedance of the 8 microfarad capacitor at an excitation frequency of 400 hertz 
is roughly 49.7 ohms at an angle of negative 90 degrees. Let's call this impedance C3. A Kirchhoff's voltage law analysis of the single loop in this series circuit suggests that E equals V1 plus V2 plus V3. Additionally, given there is a single path for current in this series relationship, it can be stated that source current IS equals I1, which equals I2, which equals I3. Current in series paths is the same. If we solve for current through any element in this series circuit, we by extension also solve for current through all other elements as well as the source current. There are several ways to obtain the desired figures. Perhaps the easiest and most direct means of doing so is again through the use of the AC voltage divider rule. The AC voltage divider rule set up to solve for V1 suggests that V1 equals 79.2 volts at an angle of negative 14.7 degrees. We could use another implementation of the AC voltage divider rule applied to the remaining series elements to solve for voltage. However, let's make use of basic series circuit properties this time. Notably, current through elements in series is the same. We know both the impedance and the voltage drop across the first impedance element Z1. This is a perfect setup for Ohm's law. Application of Ohm's law illustrates that I1 is 316.9 milliamp years at an angle of negative 14.7 degrees. Given current and series circuits is the same, it can be said that I2, I3, and source current all equal 316.9 milliamp years at an angle of negative 14.7 degrees. We now know both the impedance and the current through the second element. This is a perfect setup for Ohm's law. Application of another permutation of Ohm's law illustrates the voltage across impedance Z2 is equal to the current through it times its impedance. Substituting in our given values equals 41.8 volts at an angle of 57.7 degrees. We could use another implementation of the AC voltage divider rule or another implementation of Ohm's law applied to the remaining third element. However, let's make use of Kirchhoff's voltage law. We know the source voltage and we just solve for the voltage drop across the first and second element. A rearrangement of the Kirchhoff's voltage law equation and solving for unknown voltage V3 suggests that V3 equals 15.8 volts at an angle of negative 104.7 degrees. As one means of checking our work, one can solve for total impedance using an implementation of Ohm's law. Supply voltage over source current yields a total impedance of 299.8 ohms at an angle of 14.7 degrees. Similarly, the summation of Z1, Z2, and Z3 also yields a total impedance of 299.8 ohms at an angle of 14.7 degrees. I've got a reasonable degree of confidence these answers are correct, and we can now move on to our final illustrated example problem. Our third and final illustrated example problem features a series combination of two elements. The first element is a non-ideal 120 millihenry inductor that includes a small internal resistance of 10 ohms. The second element is a 100 ohm resistor. The source is an effective value of 208 volts and an excitation frequency of 60 hertz. We're again being asked to solve for the voltage drop across each element, the current through each element, and the source current. By all means, pause the lecture and try this on your own. If you're tracking, you should obtain the following results. The complex impedance of the non-ideal inductor requires a series of calculations. The complex impedance of the resistive portion of the non-ideal inductor is 10 ohms at an angle of 0 degrees. The complex impedance of the inductive portion on the non-ideal 120 millihenry inductor at an excitation frequency of 60 Hz is 46.3 ohms at an angle of 77.5 degrees. The resistive and inductive portions of the non-ideal inductor are in series with one another. In totality, the non-ideal inductor presents a complex impedance of approximately 46.3 ohms at an angle of 77.5 degrees. Let's call this impedance C1. The complex impedance of the 100 ohm resistor is 100 ohms at an angle of 0 degrees. Let's call this impedance Z2. A Kirchhoff's voltage law analysis of the loop within this series circuit suggests that E equals V1 plus V2. Additionally, given there is a single path for current in this series relationship, it can be stated that source current IS equals I1, which equals I2. If we solve for source current or current through any single element, we by extension also solve for current through all remaining elements. There are several ways to obtain the desired figures. This time, let's go about it by solving for total impedance. Z1 plus Z2 yields a total impedance of 118.9 ohms at an angle of 22.4 degrees. Application of Ohm's law supply voltage over total impedance demonstrates that source current will be 1.7 amps at an angle of negative 22.4 degrees. The phasor diagram for the complete series circuit illustrates that source current appears to lag supply voltage by 22.4 degrees. Given that this is a purely series circuit, it can be said that IS equals I1, which equals I2, 
which equals 1.7 amps at an angle of negative 22.4 degrees. Current through elements in series is the same. Application of Ohm's law solving for V1 demonstrates that voltage across primarily inductive impedance Z1 will be approximately 81 volts at an angle of 55.2 degrees. The phasor diagram for primarily inductive impedance Z1 illustrates that current appears to lag voltage by a relative 55.2 plus 22.4 or a relative 77.5 degree phase shift. A purely inductive element would experience a full 90 degree phase shift. Finally, application of Ohm's law of solving for V2 demonstrates that voltage across resistive impedance Z2 will be approximately 174.9 volts at an angle of negative 22.4 degrees. The phasor diagram for purely resistive impedance Z2 illustrates that current and voltage appear to be in phase with one another. As a means of checking our work, note the summation of V1 and V2 accounting for magnitude and direction yields a total applied voltage of 208 volts at an angle of 0 degrees. I've got a reasonable degree of confidence our answers are correct and we can bring this lecture to a close. In conclusion, this lecture examines several illustrated examples of series AC circuit analysis. Remember to practice these techniques as often as you need to really drive it home. Imagine how well lab will go if you know what you're doing. Thank you very much for your attention and interest. We'll see you again during the next lecture of our series. Remember to tell your lazy lab partner about this resource. Be sure to check out the Big Bad Tech channel for additional resources and updates.